So we can start this session. We have some talks. The uh, first one is on site. So the uh, talks are 15 minutes long, and since uh, um, it's, uh, we are on time constraint, uh, um, try please to uh, respect the limit. So you can uh, uh, speak for 13 minutes or so, and then there is uh, some time for question, or um, you decide. OK, so I'm happy to introduce the first speaker, Marina Amado Ferreira from the University of Helsing, and she's going to talk us to talk about the stationary non equilibrium solution for coagulation equations. Please go ahead. Thank you for the introduction and uh, for the opportunity to talk here. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, joint work with uh, Yanni Lukarinen, Alessia Nota, and Juan Velasquez on uh, stationary non equilibrium solutions for uh, coagulation equations. So uh, let's consider a particle system of N, N particles dispersed in R3 and moving independently of each other until they collide and coalesce, forming uh, growing particles. The movement of the particles and uh, their coagulation rate uh, depends on the medium where they move in, and uh, uh, the coagulation rate is described by the function k. Uh, we consider that uh, particles may be composed of different components that may represent chemical components or uh, shape descriptors like uh, area and volume. And uh, um, a particle uh, is characterized by its composition vector, x, and uh, it uh, uh, coagulates at a, a rate uh, kxy uh, with a particle of composition y, uh, producing a new particle of composition x plus y. Um, then we have uh, this system. We would like to understand how do particles grow and how does their composition change. Uh, this has applications in uh, different areas. We, ha we are interested in uh, applications in uh, atmospheric aerosols. As in uh, uh, Finland, there is a big tradition of uh, research in this area, in the uh, collection of data and also uh, experiments and simulations. And uh, um, since we are interested in uh, studying a system with many particles, we uh, consider um, a kinetic model for the particle density. And uh, in 1917, uh, um, Smoluchowski proposed uh, um, this equation for the density of clusters of size x. So this is uh, one component in the one component case. And this density evolves over time, uh, given, uh, driven by this, um, by this equation here. And uh, uh, this is uh, um, the, the time derivative of f equal to the coagulation operator that is composed of a gain term due to the collision of particles of size x minus y with particles of size y, producing a new particle of size x. And the last term is due to the coagulation of a particle of size x with any other particle. Uh, this happens at a uh, rate uh, k, x, y. And uh, depending on this rate, uh, the solutions of this equation may have a very different behavior, including loss of mass conservation in case there is the formation of infinitely large uh, particles. Um, this equation has been uh, derived from uh, spatially explicit systems, also from uh, stochastic particle systems, for only very few kernels. So in general, it is still an open problem. Uh, it has also been uh, work in the physics literature on uh, estimation of kernels uh, that are um, uh, useful in the applications, relevant for applications. And, uh, and uh, we would like to do our analysis on this equation for uh, a class of kernels that includes the physically relevant ones. So um, we are in particular interested uh, in the uh, coagulation equation under non-equilibrium conditions. And these uh, are induced by a source of small particles in the context of aerosols, this may represent the creation of new particles due to the interaction between the sun and the vegetation. 
uh, then these particles grow um, and um, uh, they may exit the system at infinity. Uh, I want to mention that we are we focus in a homo especially homogeneous situation. So, um, so then we may ask uh, if, um, uh, okay, th these non-equilibrium conditions, they lead to non-trivial stationary solutions uh, that we may expect uh, uh, to describe the long time asymptotics of the system. So we would like to study, uh, to focus our study on, on these stationary solutions. And uh, we will consider two uh, different classes of solutions that we call stationary injection solution. And this is uh, a stationary solution of the correlation equation with source, a source of small particles. And the second type of solution, it's what we call constant flux solution that is a stationary solution of the pure coagulation equation uh, with a boundary condition, a flux boundary condition at, at zero. So there is an infinitesimal, infinitesimally small uh, input of particles, um, of infinitesimally small particles into the system. Uh, and uh, these uh, constant flux solutions, they are uh, stationary solutions of the pure coagulation equation and they satisfy the they satisfy the 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 this equation that is the flux is equal to a constant j0 uh, we consider the multi component case so this j0 is a vector and uh, this equation has a one power law solution that is uh, uh, given by x to the minus gamma plus 3 over 2, where gamma is a parameter of the kernel that I will uh, tell in a minute. Um, and we um, actually, we expect that this equation has also non-power law solutions. Uh, so then, uh, in this context of uh, non-equilibrium conditions, there are not many results in the literature. Um, mainly in the physics literature, there is uh, results on explicit uh, stationary solutions. Uh, and in the mathematical literature, uh, there is by Dubovsky uh, um, existence of stationary solutions for bounded kernels. And uh, recently, we extended this uh, for uh, a class of kernels that uh, contains the physically relevant ones. They are not bounded and uh, they, and we, show existence and non-existence results for those, uh, in, for, for that class of kernels. Uh, we also extend it to the multi-component case and we study a property that is uh, specific to the multi-component case that we call localization. Okay, so the class of kernels that we consider um, uh, is uh, described here, I write this, uh, so it's bounded by these power laws that uh, are uh, de defined by the parameters gamma and lambda. Uh, they, gamma corresponds to the, or is related with the uh, coagulation rate of particles of similar size, and lambda is related with the coagulation rate of particles of different size. Um, this class includes the free molecular kernel and the Brownian kernel that are used uh, in aerosol science, in atmospheric aerosols, and uh, we have the following result. So if the exponents of these bounds of the kernel satisfy this condition, so if gamma plus two lambda in absolute value is smaller than one, then there is a stationary injection solution, and otherwise there is not any solution. So we fully characterize the space of parameters for which a solution exists or not. Um, interestingly, uh, for the free molecular kernel, there is not uh, a solution, and for the Brownian kernel, there is a solution. Um, these solutions, they, uh, they are uh, st stationary non-equilibrium, so uh, they um, 
they, they are possible to exist when the, there is a balance between the input of particles and the transport of particles towards, small, towards uh, large particles. Uh, and uh, then one may ask, uh, what is the main transport mechanism? And uh, we were able to see that the, to show that the, the, the main transport mechanism is due to collisions between clusters of comparable sizes. In fact, this is a key ingredient in the non-existence proof. Uh, and um, in the case of non-existence, in the non-existence regime, we expect that the aggregation of uh, monomers with large clusters is too fast that cannot be compensated by the addition of monomers uh, of small particles in the system and therefore the solution is expected to converge to zero and zero is not a steady state of this equation. Uh, so um, in the case where the solutions exist, uh, what can we say about these solutions? So uh, this is uh, another recent result that uh, uh, if gamma plus two lambda is smaller than one, then um, we, we, we can show that uh, the sta all stationary solutions satisfy uh, this limit. So the most of the mass, most of the solution is uh, concentrated in a region for large uh, sizes. So when R goes to infinity, uh, most of the solution is concentrated in this region where um, in the, uh, basically in around the one dimensional manifold defined by X over uh, norm of X equal to theta. Uh, this norm I forgot to mention is the L1 norm, so the sum of the components. And theta is a constant uh, vector that is defined by the uh, source, so the influx normalized. Um, so we have that uh, particles localize along this line, al along a line, um, and uh, uh, that this the direction of the line is uniquely determined by the source of particles. Uh, so another interpretation is that uh, larger particles will have a composition that reflects the composition of the source. Okay, uh, in the case of constant flux solution, we have even more detailed uh, information because we know that we, we can show that uh, the localization occurs not only asymptotically for large sizes, but also, uh, but everywhere for all sizes. And so we have the uh, constant flux solution written in terms of this uh, Dirac delta. Uh, sorry. Okay, uh, one so minute. quickly, when, yes, uh, this is the last slide. And um, uh, so I want to recall that the, this localization result holds for all solutions and all, uh, all kernels in the class considered, so it's a universal property. Uh, it is a non-equilibrium property that is specific to the multi-component setting, and it is a direct consequence of the coagulation process. So. Um, it cannot be derived from a variational principle. Uh, one can now ask how is the mass uh, uh, distributed around, the, around this line? And this is something we are working on currently. And uh, yeah, this is all, thank you. Thank you very much. There is maybe time for a very uh, quick question, if there is one. Yes, go ahead. Could you comment on the uh, uniqueness of solutions and basin of attractions? Right. Uh, there are almost no uniqueness results um, in for correlation equations, uh, except for uh, explicitly solvable kernels, um, constant kernel and uh, uh, some variations of it, some perturbations of it. Um, and there is a, there is a, 
quite a clear picture for the, these explicitly solvable kernels uh, that in the case of the pure coagulation equation, that is um, the self-similar behavior has been described and also the domain of attraction has also been uh, uh, identified. Okay, so thank you very much. In the interest of time, uh, there is no time for other questions, so we can switch to the next speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Can you please show us the next speaker, please, and the slides? Great. So, Tatiana, are you online? Yes. Thanks. So, the next speaker is Tatiana Turova, and she's going to talk about a stable multiparticle system on graphs. Please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much for this opportunity. I will be speaking about uh, stable multiparticle systems on graphs. And graphs in uh, our setting, um, they are quite uh, simple. They are one-dimensional objects, but the particles are sitting on the edges or on the intervals. So first I would like to say that the, uh, the second half of the 20th century, that was great intrusion of probability into physics. And it was mainly exploration of mathematical equilibrium in statistical physics. And, uh, that's uh, main, mainly or a lot. It was attributed to study of Gibbs distribution for many particle systems. Observe that Gibbs distribution was often imposed um, axiomatically. So to move from there, to move to dynamics, we, we necessarily come to questions like equilibrium state. And in particular, we are looking for the conditions for regular floors for particles. And of course, chaotic and resonant behavior are unavoidable. So why this ambitious problem, uh, program and where do we go? So our project is to make some, some um, particularly easy models, but to study, um, study systems which have little bit of life. As I said that uh, last century, it was mainly on statistics on uh, equilibrium physics, but there were some other also thoughts and I would like to cite a book by uh, uh, Schrodinger. Sorry, I just uh, want to make my uh, slides a little bit uh, different. Yes. So um, Schrodinger in his famous tiny book, What is Life? He asked, what is the characteristic feature of life? And he postulated that living matter evades the decay to equilibrium. In his quest for the, uh, for the features of life, uh, he also posed many interesting questions for mathematicians as well. How would we express in terms of statistical theory the marvelous faculty of a living organism by which it delays the decay into thermodynamical equilibrium, which is a synonym for him to death. So in a way, we would like to, to study life for many particle systems, so statistics is unavoidable, but we need some set of uh, finite set of axioms, presumably or preferably the minimalistic set for the axioms. So we assume that from now on that interactions between the particles are deterministic. That means that if we don't have external influence, uh, the description is purely deterministic. And we assume that external forces on the other hand could be random as well. And the source of randomness, for example, collisions in random times. But collisions themselves, they are described purely as a, in classical physics. So our models, it's a mix of classical physics and a little bit of statistical physics. So in this, in this program, particularly a group in, in Moscow worked um, on a different questions. And uh, um, the results are uh, deterministic force on one particle only uh, might bring the system of many particle systems to a fixed point. Uh, another application, or uh, one can 
start with the purely deterministic dynamics and derive earlier equations, for example, for a plug in gas. Uh, even furthermore, such a known phenomena as an electric current can be also ex explained or described in a purely uh, deterministic way as a self organizing behavior. So now I will move to actually a model of statistical physics, and I would like to describe it in more details. We look into Gibbs ensemble with a, uh, with a Coulomb interaction. On the interval 0, 1, the length doesn't matter, it could be 0, L. Uh, we have n uh, vertices or uh, n points, uh, particles. We fix particles in the ends, and on the interval, we have n minus 1 particles. For any configuration of the places for the particles, we assign energy. Energy has this form, beta times a sum for uh, interactions, uh, B. Interactions only pairwise, but uh, the interactions for uh, one particle could be with the up to k nearest neighbors. So this k in the first sum, that's the number of closest uh, neighbors. The last term in this uh, form for, uh, for the function u, that's external force. Uh, external force also acts on any, uh, on any particle depending on the, on the coordinate of the, of the particle. Uh, now we introduce also impose and Gibbs density axiomatically, and we consider the distribution of this gas on the on this one dimensional interval. Uh, the the can um, the relations between uh, two, two particles are described here. So we we take again same uh, energy function, but now we assume very precisely Coulomb interaction between the particles. Coulomb repulsive interactions. So that means that the particles tend to, to be away from each other. So one can imagine that if there is no external force and we take only nearest neighbors, when k equals one interactions, then the particles tend to, 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 to be very uh, equally spaced on the interval. Our uh, question of interest, the distribution of the interspacing for this um, particles. And in particular, we want to study the influence of external force. So in a way, we, uh, the way how we started with the force, we said that force is constant. So this Fs is constant, but due to the integration up to the place of the particle, so the, the terms here, they also depend exactly on the, uh, on the position of a particle. So we, uh, we will see that along this, uh, this function f, uh, f will be function of n. It is, uh, it is not function of k, but function of n. Remarkable feature of this uh, uh, model is uh, that it, it shows multiple phase transitions. There is a different phases for, uh, for, uh, for the spaces so that we will see now. So first, I say that uh, th there are a number of uh, papers already published on that model. And of course, that's not a unique model of one-dimensional gas. There are other models as well. But we, we are now considering the, the one that I speak about. Um, as I said, there will be five different phases for the, uh, for the, for the locations of the, of the particles, depending on how strong F is. F blows from one side, and we will see how the particles are subject to, to this force. First, firstly, we, we call weak subcritical force if F of n is O small of n. In this case, the expectation of spacing between particles is still like 1 over n, as it would be predicted for F equals 0. Observe that here we I, I start with the case when, when we consider only nearest neighbors interaction k equals one. Then uh, they, they also uh, observe that for the expectation of the spacing, we do not have uh, T, the temperature doesn't enter there, but expectedly temperature enters the variance. As high temperature, the variance is higher. Then if we increase the, the force, so we, we introduce the critical force for beta n. Beta is parameter. And if our force f 
is of order n, but the constant in front of n still strictly below four beta, then the expectation of the spacings still of order one over n. However, the constant in front of one over n is already not, uh, not one as it was before, but it already depends on k. And variance is still uh, of the same order as it, as it was. So perhaps here it's not that important the exact formulas, but the amount of different, different phases. When we come to the critical phase, the expectation uh, of the spacing may already vary between 1 over n and 1 over root of n. Uh, for the variance, we have much, uh, uh, say, weaker result here. And when uh, f, um, the, the force from one side blows stronger than, than the critical force, then what happens? That uh, some of uh, the, the first particle is already blown away from, from the uh, one end, and one uh, interval on the, on the entire interval zero one is already without particles at all. So this, uh, the length of this uh, uh, interval free of particles is, is exactly one minus root of four beta divided by F zero. And the, the rest of the particles are scattered more or less densely on the rest of the interval. When we uh, exceed even this critical range for, for the force when F is much stronger than N, all the particles are blown to, towards one end. And we, uh, we observe in fact, uh, an effect of uh, uh, superconductivity. So that was an example of a relatively uh, classical system, which nevertheless exhibits a great amount of different phase transitions. There are uh, five phases, but not, not three, as one would expect usually. So now what, what would be next uh, for, for this? Uh, he, here it is just a summary of what I say, and maybe you can, you can see on the on the plots that the particles are moved toward, towards one, one end. But we move on. Uh, surprisingly, when when we uh, we uh, take uh, into account the interaction with the secondary neighbors or further, although physically it seems like we do not change much the system, mathematically the problem comes into into different. Um, say, into a different class of complexity. I will not speak here about the details, but roughly speaking, it is like this, like considering system of independent random variables, for k greater than one, we have to consider system of dependent random variables. So here I will uh, move on due to shortage of time. And uh, just to speak about one dynamical um, model, I would like to speak about Hamiltonian dynamics of uh, particles. Now they are not on a finite interval, but we place them on the entire axis R. So again, we fix uh, parameters N that will be for certain num number of particles. L is a length, uh, L is a positive real number. You have so two minutes, <laughs> just, just a warning. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we have, uh, the particles in the indexed by uh, by z and the uh, the x k that's the coordinate of the case particle. Now we set, we set up uh, Newton's equations for the system of uh, particles. So for each k there is uh, this uh, equation in the middle, and formally we can write that this is um, Newton equation uh, with the formal uh, interaction potential energy as written here. F case in external force and alpha is a positive parameter, so we have a dissipative force. The question is, can we find conditions for this system to be periodic? Periodic, that's written here. Periodicity here means that xk plus n equals to xk shifted by, by n. Why we need per periodicity? Having this periodicity, we might also consider this system as a system on a, on a finite cir circle of a length a. And then shifting on R, that same as uh, looking for the floors on the on the circle. So we, we can find the the uh, sufficient conditions for for the dynamics to be regular. Regular that's a question to take care in the real system so that the the uh, particles they do not go through each other. For particles not to go through each other, either we have to impose condition that they never come uh, uh, to, to the same point. Or if they collide, then they have to be uh, 
elastic, uh, we have to impose elastic collision, for example. Here, uh, um, okay, again, due to a shortage of time, I will move straight to the statement. If we now identify the points at uh, zero and then L, so moving to from R to circle of length L, we can impose, uh, can, we can uh, come up with the sufficient conditions for the, for the system of uh, uh, N equations to be, uh, to be regular. Uh, so that means that, that the particles do not go through each other and they, uh, they converge to the stable flow on, on the circle. So here is a, a statement for any initial conditions, the velocities converge to F divided by alpha if F is external constant force and the spacings also uh, equal, equally spaced between particles. But um, making this uh, result, we, we really do not take care on the regularity. Uh, but to make a regularity, we have to make little more conditions. Can you wrap, wrap it up because we are on a tight schedule, <laughs> sorry. No? Okay, so that's, uh, I can say that's, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> So unfortunately, due to lack of time, we don't have time for questions. We can switch to the next speaker. Thank you for your nice talk. Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, now it's out. And the, no, it's, uh, no, it's, it's done from the computer. Ah, okay. It's not your computer, no worries. Okay. I was thinking that it was me. Okay. <coughs> okay, I think we can start. So our next okay. speaker is, uh, uh, I don't see your name, Leonardo De Carlo, Sorry. and the title is Scaling Limit Interacting Particle Models with Vorticity. Please go ahead. Okay, so I will present uh, a joint uh, work that, okay, uh, is a collaboration with David Gabrielli and Patricia Gonsalves, and uh, I will present some interacting particle mm, system uh, with vorticity, where uh, uh, we will observe uh, uh, microscopic uh, vortices. Okay, so the setting is just, uh, we are on two dimension on the, uh, with boundary condition, so we are on the torus. And uh, what I'm going to say is not really related to a particular process, but uh, for simplicity, you can keep in mind the an exclusion process. Uh, so uh, here you have uh, the, uh, this is the generator in Formula One, okay. okay. Formula One is the, uh, the generator of the continuous time Markov chain and uh, the new configuration at uh, X, uh, Y is the usual one when uh, you exchange the two, the two particles between two psi X and Y. Uh, I will denote the bond with uh, capital E, E, N. The rate that I will go consider as uh, you can see uh, in formula two, uh, in equation two are translational covariant. It means that uh, the mechanism of jump is the same along all the lattice. And with tau x, uh, we denote the translation on the uh, configuration of uh, uh, particle uh, or uh, the, the translation on a, on a function age of, uh, of the configuration. The model will be, uh, the model that we'll consider are stationary with respect to a grand canonical uh, measure parameterized by a density rho. Okay, so I will recap just something very well known that uh, in uh, uh, the hand, okay. Is it the contrary? And my is the, okay, it's not centered, I think. It's totally. It's, it's, uh, not, it's not centered on the screen. So you can point wherever you want. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Okay, so I have, uh, you, you defend the instantaneous current, that is the uh, difference between the rate of jump from uh, the bond X to Y and the bond from Y to X. And this has the property of being an anti-symmetric uh, discrete vector field. Usually when uh, this uh, current can be, sorry, when this current uh, can be decomposed as, uh, sorry, can be written as a gradient with respect to uh, um, a local function age, then uh, we can study the uh, hydrodynamics of the empirical measure, namely the mass density. And uh, <clears throat> so, um, we can, for the empirical measure, we will have a, a discrete, we can write a discrete hydrodynamics in four. And this discrete dynamic will be uh, uh, obtained by some integration, discrete, discrete integration by part uh, um, respect to the, uh, the, the, the discrete divergence of the instantaneous current. What uh, uh, we know is that we can prove uh, uh, <clears throat> we can prove a diffusive hydrodynamics for uh, uh, improbability. We can prove that uh, uh, the empirical measure follow a diffusive equation where the, uh, the current uh, follow, uh, obeys the, uh, so the fixed law, uh, namely the diffusion is respect to a symmetric uh, positive matrix. Okay, so now, uh, since this, uh, this instantaneous current is a discrete vector field, uh, you can apply um, uh, what, what is called, uh, we can apply the discrete OJ decomposition. And uh, in this case, we reduce this uh, OJ decomposition to a particular case where the, instant the instantaneous current in five is given by a gradient part plus a, a, an orthogonal gradient part that if you want is a bidimensional discrete curl. And so these are two orthogonal components of the current. And the translation of the second term, uh, the translation respect to the G, are defined in the following way. So I look here in the, the picture, so to a face, uh, to a face that is centered in uh, the barycenter uh, in, in, in respect to zeta. I, the translation respect to a face is the translation respect to uh, this point zeta on the left bottom corner. And uh, its, face, its face can be oriented clockwise or anti-clockwise. So uh, here is the, a bond belongs to uh, uh, um, anti-clockwise face and to an anti, uh, a clockwise face. So uh, uh, the, 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 the translation of this uh, uh, orthogonal, orthogonal gradient are computed, if I look, for example, this bond XY, will be computed, uh, uh, respect, uh, the translation will be defined on these two face that you can, faces that you can see in the picture. So it, uh, if you want, you, if you think about the dual lattice, it will, it will be like a gradient on the dual lattice. The remarkable property of this extra, extra current is that uh, uh, is uh, divergence free. So if you think uh, at the hydrodynamics four that you have, uh, uh, we have discussed before, this uh, extra term uh, will not contribute uh, to, the, uh, to the hydrodynamics of the empirical measure. So this, somehow can be interpreted as uh, microscopic vortices. Now let me define, introduce the, uh, the current, capital J X, Y, where uh, the, capi the, ca the calligraphic N, X, Y, is the number of particles that cross the, the bond X, Y in the time window zero T. Okay, now to observe, in a macroscopic, to observe the effect of this uh, extra part in the current respect to the gradient case, is the f you have to uh, observe a current field that is, has to be defined in the proper uh, sobel of space. And uh, so this is defined in six, where uh, we have a kind of a scalar product respect to the bond of the lattice. And 
uh, the uh, G capital GN is a discretization of a continuous vector field. So this, uh, this uh, uh, current field will be related by um, a martingale relation uh, with respect to the uh, uh, the instantaneous current. And uh, okay, this uh, will give, is, this is the discrete uh, hydrodynamics of my current field. And what I can prove is that in probability, this uh, uh, current field converge to a macroscopic current where I have a gradient term plus an orthogonal gradient term that is a, uh, um, is a divergence free term. And so, it's a macroscopic term that uh, represents vortices. And uh, the diffusion in this case, if I rewrite the, this current in eight as a diffusion, as a respect to a diffu uh, diffusion matrix, I will get that the, diffu the diffusion will be respect to a, a positive but not symmetric matrix. Okay, this is uh, uh, interesting because uh, it's a violation of the fixed law. And uh, uh, okay, where are the uh, the okay the 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 D uh, AO rho uh, <coughs> are obtained proving a local equilibrium with respect to the stationary measure nu of rho. Okay, the other thing that happens is that uh, when I consider a perturbed rate with an external field, so I consider some rate, a weakly asymmetric uh, rate, uh, namely weakly asymmetric model, it will happen that uh, the, uh, the Einstein relation are verified and the, the, both the transport coefficient D of rho and sigma rho, namely the, 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 the matrix mobility and the ma diffusion matrix, will be related only to the gradient part. So the, 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 in this, uh, uh, <coughs> the, in sigma, also in sigma rho, I will not have a contribution uh, from the, uh, uh, the uh, vorticity part of the dynamics. So when you do the proof of, of, of nine, you see that the, vort the, vortis the vorticity term in the dynamics doesn't transport mass. Okay, okay, I have an example if in case you want to see how is, how is constructed, uh, how we can be constructed dynamic of this kind. And uh, I just remarked that uh, what could be interesting uh, of about uh, formula five is the fact that uh, uh, as uh, this decomposition, it doesn't come really from the, uh, the fact that uh, for, from uh, this, to, this model are somehow toy model, but uh, the decomposition really comes from, uh, mm, from the object decomposition that uh, is uh, uh, a decomposition that is true for any, any, any vector field on a manifold. So it could be interesting because it could be a mechanism, a real mechanism to in the formation of vortices. Okay, this is an example if uh, someone wants to discuss the, assemb the sample or, okay. Are there questions? Go ahead. Oh, uh, what about logic deviations? Yeah, this is, okay, it's of course uh, one of the next step. Uh, okay, of course you already noted that probably in, if you look at central limit theorem, you will not observe the, the term. In the large deviation, mm, I'm not sure what, uh, I didn't, I'm not sure, I think that it should appear, uh, of course it will appear if you look at the joint uh, large deviation of current uh, density, but I think it should uh, appear also in the case uh, of uh, just the density. Mm. And what are the perturbations you introduce in order to uh, speed up, say, these vorticities? So, uh, I cannot hear you, sorry. So, well, in order to prove large deviation, you have to perturb your system. So, I'm asking what are the perturbations if you want just to change the vorticity? If, if I want to change the vorticity? 
Yeah, the, the piece of the current, which is uh, not the gradient one. Yes. So what are the perturbations in the system you will introduce in order to observe such uh, modifications in the current? Mm. But uh, you mean our, 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 the, our made rate? Do you mean? Uh, yes. For example, this is, this is an example, uh, the simplest construction that uh, I have. You, have, uh, you can consider <coughs> the SEP, and then uh, we add uh, uh, this uh, extra term in the rate, where the function g is defined as follow. Is okay, when, uh, what I think, I'm not sure, but uh, um, I think this, for this kind of, uh, where I have a perturbation like this, where I have this extra term with respect to the symmetric simple exclusion, uh, the dynamic cannot be reversible. And uh, this g, it will be different from zero in these two configurations that you can see on the left. And uh, uh, the, the rate works like this, okay, when you, uh, the, here, for example, I consider this bond x, y. I have a jump from the left to the right, and I find a particle in this other corner, then the rate will be one plus alpha. If I find the particle on the uh, bottom right corner, it will be one minus alpha. It's just one if I have a particle on both. The interpretation is that uh, whenever mm, this uh, uh, kind of configuration here, uh, the particle will like more to rotate anti-clockwise than uh, clockwise. Okay, may maybe we can discuss later. Okay, Thanks. sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks. We can switch to the next talk. Can we show the next speaker, please? Hi, can you share your screen or? Uh, hello, can you see my screen? Yes, now we can see it. Great. So our next talk is uh, going to be given by Atul Kumar Verma, and it's about modeling of stochastic transform problem using multi-channel exclusion processes. So please go ahead. Okay, thank you for the introduction. So in this talk, uh, I will be talking about uh, uh, modeling of transfer processes, in particular as to transport transfer processes. So as we know that in statistical mechanics, basically there are two main kinds of system, uh, equilibrium systems and which are uh, non-equilibrium systems. So systems which are far from equilibrium, they are again divided into two parts, systems, uh, equilibrium steady state, and uh, systems which evolve into non-equilibrium steady state. So in this talk, I will be talking about a particular, uh, this type of uh, systems, which belong to systems evolving towards non-equilibrium steady state. So uh, uh, we know that equilibrium systems, uh, if we talk about in physics, so we can roughly say that a system, which is uh, if all forces acting on a system is zero, so then we can say it is in the static, uh, static equilibrium. Similarly, we can define the dynamic equilibrium. And all those systems which are not into equilibrium, they belong to non-equilibrium systems. So uh, if we compare these two types of systems, so equilibrium systems, they have zero mass flux, while uh, in non-equilibrium, there is no zero constant flux in the system. And uh, they satisfy detail balance, while in the non-equilibrium, there is no uh, detail balance condition. We can define the Hamiltonian for the equilibrium systems. Uh, for non-equilibrium, we cannot define Hamiltonian. And uh, this is very important that there is very well uh, established theory to Boltzmann and Gibbs uh, uh, to study the equilibrium systems, in particular, Ising model is there, uh, which can help us in the study of equilibrium systems. But uh, there is no fundamental theory uh, or no particular uh, model actually to analyze uh, the non equilibrium systems. So, uh, my talk is today based upon uh, non equilibrium systems. So, uh, since it is not possible that we can uh, understand the all aspect of uh, non equilibrium systems, so we will focus particularly on non equilibrium steady state. So I will be talking about totally asymmetric simple exclusion process. This is a non quantum model, which is used to analyze the uh, steady state properties of non quantum systems. So 
this model is usually used for the understanding the transport processes is to question transport processes so since there is uncertainty or randomness involved in the transport processes so therefore this model is because uh, in this model we have one dimensional lattice so and uh, there are some random particles so a particle can randomly enter uh, at the first site with great alpha uh, it can move forward with great one provided the target site is empty and uh, a lattice site cannot be occupied by more than one particle. And after reaching at the last uh, particle can leave with great beta. So this is why the name is also coming. Proteasymmetric because particle is moving only in the one direction. So the rules are very simple. So we are calling it simple. Exclusion process because one site cannot be occupied by more than one particle. So this model actually describes the total biased diffusion of particles in the uh, lattice in a preferred direction. And we, uh, this is very important that we ignore particle-particle uh, particle interactions. And this also uh, follows the hardcore exclusion principle. So how this is used and why, why it is so important. So firstly, this model was given by McDonald in 1968. Since then, we are using it to analyze the non-equilibrium transport processes. So this model is not only uh, good for the uh, transport process, but it also handles so many other non systems like vehicular traffic, uh, kinetic survival polymerization, uh, polymer dynamics in dense media, division program uh, channels and uh, motion of motor proteins in a biological cell. So this is, uh, these are two different examples. One is vehicles moving on a road. So we can mimic this uh, example with the, uh, this model. Here also we have one discrete lattice and particles are moving. Similarly, here we have one road and uh, um, uh, cars are moving. Similarly, this is a biological example where this is microtubule, a biological path. And uh, kinase in desert, kinase in the moving from minus two weeks. So uh, my study, which I'm going to discuss today, that is based upon uh, this one problem. So if we, so this is a typical biological cell, a protein cell, there's a nucleus and this portion. Uh, so this is make up so many microtubules. So if we zoom this little bit part, and again, if you take one particular path, so this is known as microtubule. So we are zooming here, and then again, we are taking one. So this is microtubule. All the particles which are moving here, they are kinesine, they are moving from here. Yeah. And they are carrying some information from one place to another place for the proper functioning of the, uh, this biological cell. So how this TSEP works? So what we are doing, since this is continuous space, so we are converting this uh, continuous space into discrete one-dimensional lattice. Then we are uh, assuming uh, are describing this uh, uh, biological uh, motors as a physical particle. And like this, they are moving. So we are also assuming that okay, particle will enter and they will move forward in the lattice. And they, finally, they will leave the uh, lattice. So this is how we mimic this biological problem into uh, using this TACP model. So how we uh, study this to, so to uh, move forward, we actually mimic uh, or define this uh, random number. So tau y, this is discrete random number which uh, has the value 1 if uh, ith site is occupied and if there is no particle at ith site, so its value is 0. So similarly, we can define the configuration of the whole lattice. So this is just tau y. Where I belong to 1 to n. It is the number of sites in the lattice. So there are two types of uh, TACP. One is uh, periodic TACP, in which number of sites as well as number of particles are fixed. And this is open TACP. So in, in uh, periodic TACP, uh, this is the governing equation. And if we solve it, we will be getting only one case that is just depending upon the number of particles divided by number of total number of sites. So this is uh, okay, this is useful, but However, when we when it comes to open TAC, so open TAC, this uh, there are these are the boundary and the master equation. This is equation for the bulk, and these two are equations for the boundary. This is for the left boundary, and this equation for the right boundary, where alpha is entry rate and beta is exit rate. So when it comes to open TAC, depending upon the uh, values of alpha and beta, uh, in comparison to closed TAC, we, we obtain three different phases: low density, uh, low density, high density, and maximum current. Low density means the average density. Uh, in the lattice is less than 0 0.5, this is the density profile. High density means the average density is greater than 0 0.5, and maximum current means uh, density is equal to 0 0.5. Since this uh, density provides the uh, maximum current, so therefore its name is uh, maximum current. So, ne next concept is that, so like uh, in the road transport or the biological transport, so particles can suddenly enter into any lane or they can also leave. Like in some road, someone can join and someone can leave. So to mimic 
or to uh, incorporate the more uh, better situations, we uh, incorporate also the Langmuir kinetics. So Langmuir kinetics is a process in which particles attach and detach with some predefined traits that is a blue and the blue. So, so this is a general one-dimensional TAC circuit model where particles can enter, can leave, can hope in between, and they can also leave and uh, join the lattices. So if we just apply the Langmuir kinetics, so phase diagram changes, and now this ADLB new phase is coming. So this Langmuir kinetics actually changes the phase diagram and it provides some non-trivial, uh, very serious results. So this is the two channel. So we are moving from one channel to two channel. So uh, two channel TSC with Langmuir kinetics. So this is the model. So here, because in actual transport, there's more than one lane also. So to mimic the more uh, realistic situation, if we consider two uh, lanes, this work is already uh, done. So this is the phase diagram. Here we are obtaining instead of three phase diagram, uh, three phases in comparison to one and DSP. Here we are getting six different uh, steady state phases. Now this is my problem, which uh, so I had generalized this problem. So since number of lanes are very important, and I just wanted to know how this third lane will actually impact the phase diagram this phase diagram and whether we will be able to get some non trivial effects. And of course, as soon as we increase the number of lanes, uh, problem becomes more complicated. And uh, also it is more realistic because on the vehicular traffic as well as in the microtubal uh, dynamics, there are so many microtubules, more than uh, 61 microtubules. So this is more uh, realistic, that is the general idea. So the rules are like particle and enter in any lane with rate alpha, they can leave with rate beta. In between, uh, in, in this bulk part, they can attach and detach with rate W and WD, and uh, they can also hope between the lanes. So I'm considering fully asymmetric means uh, particles of lane two and lane three cannot go uh, backward. They can only come forward. So like particles of lane one can go, uh, can go to lane two, and particles of lane two can go to lane three. So these are the master equations. So tau y, as I already defined, this is a potential number which takes the value one and zero depending on whether particle is there or not. So this has two terms. They tell the hoping in the bulk. This red term, this is for attachment. This blue term, this is for the detachment. And this is coupling term. So if there is, if uh, uh, attachment, detachment, uh, if uh, detachment and hoping is not possible, then coupling will take place. So these are the three uh, master equations. These are equations for the uh, boundary conditions. Now, uh, so this is discrete system because uh, my I will run from one to L. So many equations are there. So to tolerate uh, sufficiently, what we are doing? We are taking the whatever transformation and converting this system into continuum. So under this continuum limit of the model, our main three equations converts into this non-linear coupled partial differential equations with these uh, boundary conditions. So if we solve uh, uh, this system of equations, we obtain this phase diagram. So this is phase diagram for two channel TACP with LK and this is phase diagram for three channel TACP. So as we can see, uh, the complexity of phase diagram increases significantly. We are also obtaining uh, various new cases, including this C1 and C2, which I will define uh, on the next uh, slide. So here, uh, here uh, uh, instead of six, here we are obtaining uh, some uh, more than nine uh, 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 steady state cases in the model. So to, uh, to understand that whether our uh, molding is correct or not, so we have also performed Monte Carlo simulation to verify our uh, uh, phase diagram. So we have taken the lattice size as thousand. We have run our code for ten to power ten, and we have simulated our system for ten to power ten to power eleven time steps. And we also ignored initial five percent uh, time steps to uh, obtain the steady state results. And we also obtain the data uh, to the average over ten years. So these are the steady state uh, different density profiles. So this phase, this which is in, which is starting from high density and coming to low density, this is the new phase which is not uh, present in the single channel or in the uh, two channel case. Similarly, uh, we are obtaining this three years, which was not present uh, in the earlier model. And uh, so similar, uh, similarly, like uh, phases like this, which is increasing from, which is starting from low density, but ultimately it phases to high density. So it is combination of uh, two different phases, which, uh, which are not available in the, uh, which was not uh, reported in the single channel as well as in the two channel. So these are few important findings of the uh, this study. Apart from that, we are also uh, able to detect the phase transitions. So they are uh, continuous phase transitions you will be able to detect. So, and these are the, if we increase the light, this coupling rate. So this is the impact of uh, omega that is coupling rate. 
So if we increase the coupling rate from one to 10, so this is stage diagram for 10. And as we can say, this the stage diagram becomes very complicated and we are able to uh, obtain a very serious uh, and important uh, profiles like A. So this, uh, this I will uh, show on the next slide. So similarly, if we uh, increase the uh, coupling rate again, we are able to get uh, a double soak uh, density profile. And once uh, we increase the coupling rate to 1000, the phase diagram is a little bit simpler. So in this reason, this, uh, the phase diagram becomes uh, so complicated. So this is a density profile, which is not present in other models. Like it will start with low density, it will reach in high density, uh, maximum current, and then it will go to uh, high density. So it includes all the basic uh, density profiles which are present in the one dimensional TEC. Similarly, in this uh, case, we are able to obtain double soak is two soft in a single density profile, which is not present in uh, other TSCP models in this context. So these are uh, also few important findings of this model. So which says that adding one extra lane, which actually makes the system more realistic, introduces few non-trivial properties of such non-equilibrium uh, non transport system. So this is finite size effect and jumping effect. So finite size effect means if I will increase the number of sites in the system, how the system will behave. So we are able to see that only thing is it will be more uh, stronger uh, and the results are not going to change. Ultimately, your phase is not going to change. So you have one minute more. So, so I will be, uh, finish it within one minute. So this is a uh, jumping effect means initially if we increase the number of uh, the coupling rate. So firstly, so it will move from uh, back, uh, forward direction and then it starts moving backward. So this is called jumping uh, effect. So conclusion is that we have obtained the bulk induced stage transitions, which are not present in the single edge based uh, TACP models. And uh, we are able to obtain one uh, phase, which includes all the basic phases like low density, high density, and maximum current. We are also able to achieve maximum current and uh, jumping effect is also observed, which is not present in other cases. So these are the main uh, findings, which also reflects that the channel is more uh, uh, suitable to understand the um, traffic systems. These are two references, and uh, this is a paper which uh, was presented. Thank you. Thank you very much. There is a, a one very quick question, maybe. I don't see question here, and there are no questions online. So thank, thank you again for your for your talk.